paper. At the moment I'm using matches to light that. Some old newspapers, egg cartons. Use this to pull out the frames. An empty box to put any excess wax into. And I have my hide tool in here, keeping it clean. Hi. I use old egg cartons, the cardboard type, because they're quite useful for growing seeds in but I also use it when I'm putting my flame together in my smoker. Okay let's get ready. dry lavender so I put that into the smoker as well I'm going to transfer a split I did two weeks ago into a full hive. I'll explain what a split is. A split is when you see, perhaps in springtime, your hive doing incredibly well and then they're filling up the space. I want to use, you know, like the lay terms to make it as simple as possible. By their very nature, honeybees in order to succeed, in order to survive, they actually have to swarm. 
that's part of how they are able to um, build. So their way of populating is by splitting or is by swarming and by that it means that the hive will swarm by different methods. Typically it can be the original queen laying eggs and then leaving behind those eggs but swarming the hive by taking with her the flying bees. What that means is what's left behind are eggs, larva, pupae or brood. Brood is um, bees at different stages. They're left behind and they are not able to fly because they're in their small stages in egg, larva or pupae. But when they finally do hatch or emerge, they will have created themselves another queen. So typically, but not always, when that queen swarms with her flying bees, they may have created what is known as a queen cell. The queen cell is a different elongated shape on one of the frames in the hive and that's often an indicator to those of us who keep bees that the hive is planning on swarming. Now swarming is a very natural process, it happens in the wild. Remember these are wild animals, they are wild and they are going to do what is required of them to succeed, to survive. So I created, if you like, an artificial swarm or I split the hive and I place the queen in this nuke box. A nuke box is simply a smaller version of the full brood box. It's simply a smaller version to allow the smaller number of bees, including the queen, to be quite cosy. What I plan to do today is have a look at that nuke box, which is about, it's been about uh, 10 days. I'm going to transfer that into a full hive. So that's one of the things I plan to do today. I also have a second hive that I'm going to split and I'll try and explain that. So this is an empty hive. I'm going to transfer a split hive which contains a queen, some flying bees and there was some brood in here. The brood is the baby bees and they have since emerged and have been flying and bringing food back to the hive. I suspect that they have grown out of this smaller space or the nook and that is why I'm going to transfer them into a full hive. Um, I'll place them into a full hive just into the brood box which is the lower box but I may not put all these extra parts which are the supers in them. I'm just going to inspect to see what we have here. When you do an inspection, it's dependent on what you see as to what you will do. So what you find will determine what action you take. There's a couple of ants in here to be expected. A couple of spiders that have made this home.
this is an empty, an empty hive. Typically in a hive, you have, well, with this one I have 10 frames. The end one is what we call um, a dummy board. It's not a frame, it's just to fill out the gaps. I can make a decision as to whether I have my frames vertical or horizontal. The entrance is down here. So in terms of lay layers, I have the floor. I'll just clear up old debris. That's the floor. It's a mesh floor. Then I have a deep or the brood box. The brood box is where the queen will lay eggs. Now I'm making a decision as to, in this nuke box here, the frames are this way, vertical, whereas here they are horizontal. I could, so as not to cause too much confusion, add these frames or, or just turn the box this way to give the bees the same layout of their home for want of a better word. In a hive typically at the ends or the edges is where the food will be stored and as you work into the center is where you find the brood. This frame is empty but it'll be a place where the worker bees can build up the cells to allow the queen to be able to lay the eggs so they have been drawing out the comb food as i said normally goes on the outer edges and the queen usually stays more to the central and will need places to lay eggs. So depending on what I find in the nook will determine the layout. Here were some brood that did not hatch. And the bees, when they occupy here, will clean this out and make it available for the queen to lay. So I'm thinking already of placing plenty of space for the queen to be able to lay her eggs. The bees would have made some, would have filled out some of these frames with honey, I suspect, on the outer side. So I will transfer those into here, depending on what I see. So this is the plan. All I'm doing is placing them into a larger box. I may or may not see the queen. Sometimes it's not important to see the queen because actually what you might see instead are eggs. Day old eggs indicate that the queen has been here very recently, as, as recently as today, and certainly yesterday. They're looking in good shape, good condition. Their wings are intact. I'll place that down here. You can see that they really have filled out this frame or this nuke. They have filled this out and they will absolutely be looking for space at this time. So um, transferring them into the full hive couldn't have come sooner. They have outgrown this nuke box. I need to be very gentle because it, I, I don't want to hurt any of the bees. And certainly it would be a disaster if I were to injure the queen. They seem pretty calm. I'm observing their temperament. As I pull it out, I'm mindful not to swing the frame. And I'm just going to see what I can... I'm looking for the queen. I can see brood. Brood is young bees. I can see brood.
I can see lava at different stages. And I'm going to place this back into the full frame or into the full hive in the same order in which I did not see the queen on that frame. However, I did see some young lava. Just acting very slow and approaching it very slowly. So far no queen cells. Remember a queen cell will be an indication that they might be wanting to swarm. Swarming is a good thing. However, rather than letting the bees swarm and get caught into somebody's chimney, into a disused building, it is often a good idea for beekeepers, such as myself, to observe their pattern and see when they are likely to swarm based on patterns you see in their hive and then to do an artificial swarm or a split of the hive. I see plenty of capped brood here and typically in the corner of a frame is where you see the food. You can see up here this frame contains a few drones. Drones are cells that are slightly bulkier so these are drones, these are male bees. These will come out and emerge as male bees. All the others are really very uniform as you can see. And I think she might think she's running out of spaces to lay. This is really very well filled up. So I'm going to put a frame for this one that's built out. I'm going to add a frame. That will provide space. not seen the queen today but I'm not worried because I have seen eggs and ah there's the queen the queen is just here the queen is just here that's the queen in the center of the frame in the center of the picture that's the queen isn't she beautiful? 
that's the queen just there so I've got to be incredibly careful as I, I place her I'm actually going to put her in between I'm remove that one because she's not on that frame I'm going to place her gently into this box here and with extra care to ensure that I don't squash her because then the hive would be clean less. So that's great. I'm actually then going to protect her with this frame of brood and after this frame I have an empty frame where she will now begin to find space for her to be able to lay So I'm just going to move the frames up. So I've transferred them from here into the wooden food box. It's a lot of honey in this frame. So as I said, the food tends to be on the outer frames and the brood into the inner frames. where they were so that the flying bees that are out uh, foraging when they come back they will come back into this place that they will call their home. I'll place this nuke box to the side and the few bees that are in here will migrate to their new position. These are some of the bees that were in the feeding area. I'm just going to knock them in to the hive. That does not hurt the bees. Right, so I've been in there for long enough. I'm just going to remove wild comb, the wax, and place it into the box. This can be melted down and used to make things like candles. I'm going to put back the dummy board to prevent the bees from making wild comb in that gap. 
because bees do tend to fill up all gaps if the gaps are greater than what we call bee space. So they're all squeezed in. Can you see the bees? But they're letting their family know where they have moved into now. The tails are up in the air, fanning the queen's pheromone. And um, I hope they're pleased with this larger hoe. So I'm going to get that covered up. The next thing I'm going to place onto it is the queen excluder. Place that gently on top. And what that means is that the bees can migrate into the upper layer. But I'm not going to put an upper layer on it just yet. I'm going to let them get used to this size. And then I'm going to. Okay, let me. Right, my, my, my bad, as they say. I need to get the room. Place that on top. I'm just going to find something, a couple of old tiles, just to cover up the holes here. Those holes can be useful if you need to feed them. I'm not feeding the bees, they have plenty of honey and uh, it's a nice dry day and I saw evidence of lots of pollen and nectar in there. So that's their new position. I could have knocked these bees down into position but I'm just going to leave this old or their previous nuke box here they will be able to find their way down into their new position in fact just in case these are the ones that are not the flying bees they might be the ones that were the nursing bees the nursing bees don't fly out of the hive I will just give them a gentle knock down Okay, so I'm going to knock down into the hive. There we go. And then I'm going to get rid of that box. There's a gap underneath this roof, so I won't be squashing the bees. There is a gap underneath here. So they are all in. And then finally, the roof goes on. Let's get our friend of the pollen out of the way. Okay, so they've been transferred, which is good. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. That went well according to plan, and I'm really very happy with the results. I'll see you again on my next program. So thanks so much for watching. See you again soon. Bye.